Hello folks and welcome to uh, Linux for Seniors. So I have uh, been doing videos for quite a few years. I had a previous YouTube site with over 450 of them. And uh, so I'm starting up a new channel, uh, Linux for Seniors. And uh, my videos, I'm going to be targeting an audience that wants to uh, basically uh, listen and learn a little bit more about Linux in a different way of in other words, uh, a lot of people click on videos that are one or two minutes long and you barely understand what the person is trying to say or give you the information about. And uh, they don't really take their time to explain a lot of things. So that's what uh, I'm targeting the new audience with. It's basically trying to uh, slow down a little bit and uh, explain a lot of things a little simpler. Simpler. Um, in either case, uh, my videos are definitely going to be over two minutes, so I do encourage that you subscribe. Um, you can just click on my, my face there or subscribe at any time, in other words. And uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, this system here for File Manager today, Linux Mint 21.1. So I am going to use NeoFetch, which is a just a simple command of what's in the box. Well, I'm going to be talking about Linux Mint 21.1, their latest version of the Cinnamon desktop. And I know you can see all my hardware stuff in there. So anyways, um, let's talk about um, Linux Mint in general. So Linux Mint is a great system. You can uh, do all kinds of things with it. I'm going to turn this into the standard icon. And uh, you can do stuff like that in a couple seconds. I'll turn the icon back on so you'll understand that that's definitely Linux Mint's uh, menu. So you will see some additional icons in here which I'm not going to talk about today. I will show some of that in the future. But more importantly, I'm going to talk about the file manager today. So I do encourage that you watch this video. Uh, if you don't have time to watch the whole thing in one sitting, then come back tomorrow, next day or whatever after you hit subscribe. So my icon is slightly different, but more importantly, the file manager works the same in your system if you have Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon Desktop. This is Nemo, the file manager. So I'm going to be showing you a couple of things that you may or may not be aware about your file manager and also some undocumented tips about some of them having to do with resizing icons and stuff. The first thing of note is when you open up Nemo, your file manager, it tells you how much free space on your current hard drive. I have some additional devices, which translates into internal hard drives and external hard drive and or USB sticks. So that's what these guys are. You always start with your home folder. Your home folder can contain favorites marked with a star. It can contain a, a set of folders or files. There's also hidden files and folders. I'll talk about that in a little bit here. I'll also talk a little bit about compression. So in either case, folks, welcome. The first thing I want to talk about, though, is your settings. Now, a lot of people go in here, automatically change the behavior from double click to single click. I'm just going to tell you the tricks I'm going to be showing you is done with the default setting of double click. That is the default settings when you install this file manager. If you change that to single click, some of the stuff that I'm about to show you does not behave properly. I prefer double click not only on this Linux distro, but others. That's just my preference. The other thing I'm going to talk about is this toolbar. I specifically like this one, Show Thumbnails, which is located right here. You have plenty of room on this toolbar for all of these tools. Okay. You can also toggle the entry. As you can see, there's plenty of room there. Even if I blow this up, it becomes even longer. All right, so if you're not aware that you can resize things, you can try double clicking. And yes, I do have a custom mouse pointer. I'm sure you've seen that. But I'll talk about that very briefly a little bit later. So with that said, let's talk about resizing icons. You can do that by dragging this little guy down here. You can go to the view and click on zoom in and out or normal size or take your uh, control key and hold it down and hit the plus key or the minus or the zero. I'm going to show you a quicker method using mine. I am right-handed, so normally my right hand holds the computer mouse, and there's a scroll wheel on mine, and most of your modern computer mice have those. I'm going to take my 
right, I'm sorry, my left hand and push down on the control key and hold it there. While scrolling using my computer mouse, I can resize these at will. You will find this is quite easy to do and you'll probably find this will be your preferred method of resizing moving forward because it's so easy to do instead of trying to aim for this thing or even clicking this menu open. Now, you can also use Control plus or minus, but that requires normally two hands or you take your hand off the mouse, you're pressing down the control and then go and finding your plus or minus keys. So leaving my left hand on the control key, scrolling up and down is pretty easy to do. I'm gonna leave this in a large format and then I'm gonna click my download folder for a second and I'm gonna resize these using my method going the other way, making these really tiny. Or you can just drag this to almost zero. Now I'm gonna switch this to my home folder. I want you to notice that it actually remembered the setting for it. Now there's a lot of different file manager for Linux systems. This is Nemo. Nemo has the capability of remembering where you left your icons for different folders. It's a very cool feature. So let me resize this back up using my method to a comfortable size. And I'll resize these also using my method. Again, I could drag this in and out or click the menu or even use control plus or minus. But I prefer using my method because it's very quick. Now, where does this also come in handy? I'm gonna go to my pictures folder and open up wallpaper for a second. I can resize these at, at will. You notice that it doesn't have any legends now as I make them larger, I get more information. Okay. So the other thing of note, a lot of people are not aware of this with Linux, but this is 16 JPEG and so is this. They're totally different pictures. The only difference between the two is the spelling of the dot JPEG. I want you to notice that. That is a valid file. The other thing of note is this is 15 JPEG. So is this and so is that except that one has 15.jpg.jpg. You probably get an error if you try to view that on your Microsoft systems. Maybe not. But I just wanted to let you see the differences here. All right, let me scroll this back up to uh, Dinky. And uh, you have no idea what these look like. I'm going to show you a nifty little trick if you have double click turned on. I'm going to click this first photo only once and hit the space bar on my keyboard to get a preview of that and hit the space bar again to close. I'll find another one here, except uh, these are so tiny that I'm gonna bring up the thumbnails to a, a different size. I'm hitting that same thing again. Then now I'm gonna click on a different one and hit the space bar. And then I'm gonna move my mouse pointer kind of toward the bottom and there's a resizer right there. This is still a preview. There are no close buttons here, as you noticed. My, I'll take my hand completely off the mouse and then I'm gonna hit the space bar to close it and space bar to reopen that in a smaller thumbnail. Again, I'd have to now click this resizer to get it big. All right, with that said, you can do this to any photo or wallpaper. Okay, like this mushroom, for instance. You can also take any of these wallpapers and set it as wallpaper. Okay, so if you have photographs of your children, your pets, whatever, you can do that rather easily. Also with your own photographs, um, set that as wallpaper. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, it's a river. And if you noticed, it's a vertical fashion photo, but Linux Mint actually resized it for me for the wallpaper. That's nice. Right click, properties, image. This was taken with an iPhone 8 Plus in 2019. And here's all the particulars. So if you got digital information on your um, imported um, photos, you get that from your file manager. It's kind of cool. Right click, set as wallpaper. If you don't have that option, go take a look at your edit preferences under plugins and make sure that's active. You can always click enable all. All right, so resizing these, I can do this all day long. All right, so something to be aware of also, and by the way, when I release the control key, these will remain in this size, and my scroll wheel not, now works in this resized format. All I'm doing is rolling my scroll wheel now. 
because I've already, I, I took my hand off the control key. You also have this way of viewing things and this way of viewing things. If you need some additional columns to be added in here, then go to Edit, Preferences, List Columns, and you can activate all these other things, including permissions. Okay, so a lot of different ways of viewing things. Most people like this format. All right, I'll make these slightly bigger and leave it there. Go back to my home folder. So you can create folders. You can create text documents. Now, when you do this, this uh, is a text editor. This is not a word processor. Okay, if you uh, needed to have a word processing document, uh, most of the time, if not always, you will have the uh, LibreOffice installed. So you would use a LibreOffice writer to normally do that kind of stuff. This is a valid document. It even it has no extension on it. I'm not going to talk about script files in this video, so don't don't think about that. Even though you can see them, um, this particular uh, file actually let me just open it is a simple text file. It has the word test in it. If you're going to port this out to your Windows or Mac machines, I would rename them with uh, b.txt or something like that because the, the other operating systems do not like documents without extensions. On a Mac, this is interpreted as an, as an application. On a Windows system, it just goes, huh? It may even ask you, what is it? But in a lot of cases, you get an error. But So rename that file. All right, so we have uh, different folders. We also have hidden files. Now, hidden files can be viewed several different ways. Right-click, show hidden files. View, show hidden files. Control-H. It is now showing me all the hidden files and folders. Anything with a dot in front of it is a hidden folder. That's a hidden folder. So, born-again shell history, bash history, this has a dot in front of it. This is a hidden file. These are all the commands I performed it in my terminal box, for instance. Okay, so one um, folder of note you may be interested in. It. You see this mouse pointer here? It's it actually resides right here. It's this one, and I picked it by right-clicking System Settings, Themes. It's right here. I was able to pick it because I have folders in my dot icons folder. All of these are mouse pointers. Radioactive, this one right here. Sorry, I need to close that. Is this one right here. It looks just like that. This one here is not stored in this folder. This one is stored in your file system under user, under share. Click in here, icons. That's that one. This folder is protected by root permissions, so I'm really not going to cover that in this video. This is a little bit more complex for most users to understand, but that's where all mouse pointers that you want to use for current users and future users. If you are just dealing with your local user, and that's all you're doing is you have a single user on your system, placing those in here is a lot easier to maintain. I can delete these folders at will. I can add more mouse pointers. I can delete them also very easily, just like any other folder. So let me see what's in my trash. Let me empty this. Let me go back. Let me let you see this one more time before I do this. This is radioactive. I'm currently using this mouse pointer. So I want you to notice that's there. So I have one, two, three, four rows plus one. I'm going to delete this folder on purpose. I'm going to reopen this and I need to go back out and back in. Sorry. You notice this missing one. I just have four rows. You remember I had four rows plus one. There's no radioactive in here. That's the name of the mouse pointer. Let me do a restore. But again, I need to back out of this before I do that. So go to the trash, the trash and good exercise. You click on the object and you hit restore. You can select multiples also. Restore. Now that's back in there. 
it was that quick. There's radioactive. Let me go back to my mouse pointer and close this. All right, so they're contained here. Normally in the past, I don't know how it operates now. I haven't even tested that yet. But if that folder is not there in the past, when you click themes, it generates this folder automatically with nothing in it. Except I think it has the, it may have a subfolder called themes, but that's about it. That'll be blank. You can also manually create that folder yourself. I do this quite often with other Linux distributions because those other Linux distributions also use the same location, dot icons, mouse pointers. Where can you get these extra mouse pointers? You can go to my YouTube site, hit subscribe, go to the about section, scroll down toward the bottom, look for a website called gnome-look.org, nonprofit. There'll be over 700 of these kind of things there. I um, I just gave you the um, instructions on how to put this in, those in here, so I will probably end up doing a dedicated video for that a little bit uh, later, but not today. And it's currently not there. It was on my previous YouTube site, but not on this one. But at least now you know how to do it. All right, Control H to get back out of it. Let's talk about a uh, little bit about compression and moving files back and forth. We'll do all that in one step. So there's a couple of different ways to transfer files from your systems to other devices by doing a drag and drop. In other words, dragging the file, dragging the folder and dropping it. All right. So other devices are internal hard drives, external hard drives and USB sticks. That's what I have here. I have internal hard drives and they're mixed. The symbol for that is a spinning hard drive. The symbol for that one is a solid state drive. And that's the newer type of solid state drives called NVMe. So I even called it that. So anyways, let's uh, think about a couple of different things. You're gonna, making, you're gonna make uh, copies of something. You know, whether it's this file here, that B, you wanna copy it and you wanna put it somewhere else. Maybe a USB stick, maybe another internal hard drive, whatever maybe another folder even. There, so you can do the simple copy here. Okay, You can also use the command control C as long as you select the object. And what I mean by an object is it could be a folder or a file, it doesn't matter. You can also use another method that uh, this file manager Nemo has. It's called an extra pane. I call them split panes. The split panes are currently the same right now. However, if I click this one and click this USB stick backup four that becomes that window and this becomes the uh, well let's home folder okay so let me toggle the entry because it was just holding the previous information so if I toggle the entry this says home tman tman is the name of my user and that one says backup four let me toggle the entry on that it says media tman backup four media meaning USB stick so I could technically take this file, drag it and drop it, and it's making a copy of B over to the USB stick. Okay, there's another text file here, or it could be a script, I don't know which. Let me cl click and display it for a second. Yeah, it's a text file. Okay, so now I am going to get rid of this again. I'm just going to delete it. There's a different way of, of doing this if this is confusing to you. A lot of times when I try to teach this, I actually do it this way. I have you make two windows instead of doing the split pane. I think it may be easier for you to understand. Let me get rid of this box and resize this one. Why am I resizing? Because I'm going to make two of these. That's why. So go to edit and uh, <laughs> If you're tired of looking at this guy, let me change the wallpaper to something uh, dark. How's that? <laughs> Less distracting. <laughs> All right, let's go to File, New Window, Control N. You notice there's a lot of keyboard equivalents to a lot of these functions. So it makes two identical windows currently. Not identical windows, but identical sources. Okay, I can resize this until I get them identical, but I'm not even gonna go with that. 
All I want is two windows to work with, with a little bit of room. All right, so both of these are in the same location is what I'm getting at. If you hit the toggle here and toggle here, you'll see what I'm talking about. This just is squeezed together because the box is smaller. If you want to enlarge that a little bit, so be it. All right, so what are these good for? Well, I'm going to leave this one in backup four, and I'm going to click this one to downloads. Now you can probably understand why this becomes simpler to understand. So if you make two boxes and you drag any files or folders to that other box, if it is going from your internal folders, in this case downloads, into a device, internally or externally, it's considered a move. I'm sorry, a uh, copy process, copy process. So I'm copying, I'm going to grab a hold of this one, this one JPEG. If I drag and drop it, this is a copy. It leaves the original where it's at. The same thing goes with the folders. So if I grab this 2022 folder, it's making a copy on my USB stick, not moving it. The other, it can be said is if I were to go to the home folder here and then uh, home folder here, this, these are identical currently. So I'm going to switch this up and go to downloads and go from, uh, and I'm going from my home folder into my downloads, which is right here. If I take this B and drag it over to here, I am not copying it. I am moving it. I moved it from my home folder into downloads. Now I'm going to move it back. That's the only difference to think about if you're just dragging and dropping. This could be, same can be said with, with folders. When you, are move, when you are dragging and dropping into a device, that is considered a copy. So if I wanted a copy of 2022 into backup one, because it's a device, I would just drag and drop it. Now this is, it made a copy of that one into here. Does that make sense? Hopefully it did. All right, so let's talk about compression for a second. I'm gonna actually get rid of that one. I'm gonna do two things in this uh, short video here, short video. <laughs> It's getting kind of lengthy, but anyways, um, I'm going to make um, this process where you can understand a couple of different things. I'm going to do multi-selections and compression almost all at the same time. But uh, what I'm talking about is explaining. So you could select a single file or folder and compress it by right-clicking. Or you can select two and right-click and compress. Or you can select more than two. So I'm going to drag a box around these three. I can continue and hit four and five or even downstairs. And now everything is selected and I can compress all of those things at the same time. But I don't want these two folders. So how do I select that? Well, I could do click, hold the control key, click, 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 click. You could do it that way. However, I'm going to show you a simpler method. Just drag a box around those three hold the control key down and drag another box around the other two. Now all five of those are selected. Right click on any of these red highlighted ones and hit compress. Let's talk about compression just briefly. The first box that you see is the name. It's taking in the name of the folder that I'm currently at. So if you, that's fine with you, then you can hit create. I would probably rename that. I'm going to call this one uh, X because I can. You can name it anything you want. You can put a proper name. I'm just using a letter. I want it in the same location though. You could also select a different location. I don't really recommend that because you'll end up probably losing the file somewhere or don't remember where you put it. Leave the same location. The next object here is a, something to think about though. I'm going to scroll to the top and let you see this. Dot .7z is a more modern compression uh, method than say zip but these are all the different types of compressions dot 7z also has the capability of doing encryption including your file list just as an fyi i'm going to use the simple dot zip and i'm going to hit create so all i did was take these five objects and again when i use the word object there could be folders but in this case, they're files. 
and they are all compressed inside of one. So where do I want to put this? I could put it on my USB stick. And what's the purpose of people compressing files in most cases? Is when they have small USB sticks and they're taking uh, files and crunching them down so they can squeeze them onto the USB stick. A lot of people do it that way. I'm going to close this. Show you a nifty little trick for uncompressing. When you double click on this thing, you can extract all of these at the same time if you want to, or you can only extract one or two if you want to. Let me show you an example of that. And I'm doing this again. The file is currently located on a device, in this case, a USB stick, but I have it open here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag one or two of these things to my desktop. You could drag it to any folder if you want. So an example of that is a JPEG. You click on it and hit the space bar to get a preview of that. Now I'm going to drag the other one that it's a PDF. Click on it and hit the space bar. Let me move this up so you can see what this is. Now I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my computer mouse to scroll through the pages. This is still just a preview. Double click to open this up into XViewer or XReader, excuse me, XReader. And I can go page by page. Two different ways of doing things. However, now I'm going to close this. You noticed I didn't extract any of the other ones. That's a cool feature. You can do this on your local system also. I'm going to multi-select on these and hit delete. So there's a lot of different things you can do with compression. And keep in mind, this is not the only format. But this is a very common format, though. There's lots of different ways of compressing things. And you don't have to just do files. You can do files and folders. Okay. So I'm going to leave that alone and uh, go back to... Um, Let's see, what else did I want to cover in this video? There are, I mean, I, I can continue probably going, but, um, you know, there's a lot more advanced features that I can probably show. But at this point, I think I've given you the basics of this file manager. You can do a ton of things with it. Just don't forget that um, your location, if you're looking for in a hurry, how, many, how much space you have on your drive, it's located right down here. How much space is on your USB stick? Just click it. It'll tell you and add, it'll be added up for you. You can also get the, how are these formatted? All right, right click, properties. Um, a lot of people don't know what Fuse is, so let me open up a different tool for this. And you have that already installed. It's called Disks. So Fuse is NTFS, NT file system. It's a Windows file system. The other side of my USB stick is formatted with extension 4. If you're familiar with that format, it is Linux. So essentially, when I insert this USB stick into a Microsoft machine, it will only see that partition. This will be blank. It won't even recognize it. I was just giving the example here. So. That is formatted with Fuse or NTFS. This is formatted with extension 4. These are formatted, I believe, with extension 4. Yeah, this should be. Even this NVMe. Uh, actually, that needs to be mounted. So now I need to property. Yeah, that one's formatted also with extension 4. This is my fastest hard drive right here. This is a spinning hard drive denoted by that symbol. That's a solid state drive, which is a lot faster than the spinning hard drive. But this NVMe drive is faster than the standard solid state drive, denoted also by the same symbol though. Back in here, under disks, that's my current drive, and it's denoted by an NVMe symbol. USB stick, Standard um, spinning hard drive, two partitions. Just to give you an idea of, you know, what 
when you're starting to drag files in there. And keep in mind when you're dragging large amount of folders and files into USB stick, the transfers are a lot slower than your internal drives. The reason I mentioned the speed and the drives is because when you're transferring, uh, in my case, yeah, let me grab a hold of pictures for a second. If I were to copy this whole folder, 34 gigabytes, into this NVMe drive, the transfer rates are quite fast to be within under 30 seconds. If I transfer that into a USB stick, we're talking 34 gigabytes will probably be somewhere in the vicinity of 45 minutes. Possibly. I'm just, I'm just throwing numbers out at you. It'd be a lot slower, let's put it that way. On that note, folks, hopefully you have subscribed. I will have lots of videos coming up regarding not only this operating system, but others. Thank you for watching.